Okay, good morning, everybody. How are we doing today? Okay, good morning, everybody. How are we doing today? Yeah, there we go. Good. Uh, it's good that uh, we're here. And uh, we do this little thing a lot of times on the Sunday mornings of holiday times, like this is the week leading up to the 4th and the week after the 4th. Uh, a lot of Cochrane is in a lot of different places. We want to pray for our family, church family that's out and about. But man, look at the people who chose to come to church today. So I pat you on the back. Great thing. And um, we're, we're just here to worship God uh, in spirit and truth, try to be real with him, real with each other. And I'm glad you're here. If you're a guest of ours, let me say this. There should be some cards in the back of the chairs, a little VIP connection card. We just like to know who you are. It doesn't cost you anything. We won't bombard you with stuff. But if there's a, um, if you would take the time to fill that out, there's an offering plate as you, as you leave. If you go out that door, you'll see it there on your left. You just put that in the offering plate. So I have some ministry notes, some things I'm supposed to share with you today. Okay? The first one is this. Today, and I don't even think he's in the room. Is Ryan in the room anywhere? Are there any McQuarters in the room anywhere? Anyway, um, today is Ryan's, or, or I don't know if it's specifically today, but it might have been just a few days ago, actually. But Ryan is celebrating his third year anniversary here on staff at our church. How about that? Yeah. And, you know, we've tried to recognize uh, Leela for winning the national championship, right? And uh, it, so this time her parents called ahead of time and said she's not going to be there Sunday either. So, so you have to wait till the next Sunday. And so we congratulate her for like the fourth time, and uh, we'll do it in person. Um, some things I want to make sure you're praying about. Our uh, Ugandan minister team will be heading back. Uh, probably starting their journey sometime Tuesday and will end up in Atlanta Wednesday about 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock. It's a long trip. And so pray for their safety. I saw Steve and Regina, I think, earlier. Yeah, how'd it go? It a good experience? When did y'all get back? <coughs> Very good. We're glad you got back. So I've been praying for y'all as well. Okay, our regular activities tonight. Wednesday is a whole different deal. Uh, none of our regular Wednesday night things related to children and students and uh, adult prayer meeting. Uh, there'll be nothing going on on this campus, as a matter of fact, on Wednesday night. But at 6.30 on Wednesday, if you're like, ah, what's something we can do as a family tonight? Come over to the summit. You know, used to be the hangar, and that's the summit uh, two blocks that way where our students do a lot of their stuff. We're just going to hang out together, okay? Uh, we're going to have uh, chilled watermelon. Yes. We'll have some bottled water. Yes. And then we're, we're asking, challenging those of you who consider yourselves to be incredible homemade ice cream maker kind of people to pull out your best recipe and make a churn of homemade ice cream to chase our watermelon with. And, uh, and we'll just hang out there. Children, parents, adults, grown up, little ones, all of us together. 630 over at the summit on Wednesday night. Legacy Builders, Thursday this week, Bible study, right? 10 o'clock. Right in here, read the second chapter of John in preparation. At least. At least read the second chapter. More if they want to. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it's all about chapter eight. <laughs> okay. Your homework just increased. Be familiar with John chapter 2 through chapter 8. And uh, join, join us on uh, Thursday morning for that study. And then July 13th, which is a week from Thursday, is our Legacy Builders Luncheon. Be right here in the Fellowship Hall. Invite you to that. Children's camp. Got some children be leaving uh, on Friday. Uh, heading, up to, uh, heading over to Bruton Park College Central Kid Camp over there. Be in prayer for them. And then the last thing I just want to mention, on July the 20th, okay, so that's uh, two weeks from this Thursday, on the 20th, we're going to be having the second of our marriage tune-ups. Jeff and Beth Ford uh, will be here to lead that. They led the, the, the first one back in uh, May. Uh, it does require pre-registration. Uh, there's also a meal provided. It's from 6 to 7.30 p.m., an hour and a half, just working on our marriages and uh, looking at uh, where we're at and what's going on and from a biblical perspective. And you can register there it is right there. And if you have your phone, you can, go, you can use that QR code right there and get to that registration and be good to go for that. So there you go. Anything else? Anything I missed? 
Anything at all? Announcement needs to be made. Okay. So, man, I love it when people are walking the aisles to the altar before we even really get past <laughs> announcements. That's, that's the power of the Spirit of God at work. It's good to see you here today. It's good to be together as God's people. And um, we gather not because we're people who have figured it all out. We, we're in here because it's a journey of faith, and we're learning, and we're learning together. And uh, if you're in here under the impression that we've all got it figured out, I'm sorry. No. We don't. Uh, but we love Jesus, and, and we want to worship him. So let's, let's pray together. Father God, we, we bow before you. You're beautiful. Father, you are incredible, beyond our words to express. Thank you for your love, and thank you for your mercy, thank you for your grace. And God, thank you for, for who you are. Thank you for being you, so constant, always the same, full of justice. And it's in your presence we gather. And it's for your pleasure that we gather. And we ask your forgiveness if we've come in here kind of with a, hey, what can this service do for me? Rather than considering ourselves an offering of worship to you. So by your Holy Spirit working in us, your presence that surrounds us, would you give us freedom uh, here in these moments to, to, to worship? To worship in the way we fellowship. To worship in the way we sing, the way we say the Bible. Father, so that all that we do uh, just brings you glory and brings you pleasure, brings you honor. This we ask and pray in the strong name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, stand with us as we're saying about how he is the king of our hearts.
give him a freedom high five. You can be seated now. On, on the eve of our struggle for independence, a man who might have been one of the greatest among the founding fathers, Dr. Joseph Warren, president of the Massachusetts Congress, said to his fellow Americans, our country is in danger, but not to be despaired of. On you depend the fortunes of America. You are to decide the important question which, upon which rests the happiness and the liberty of millions yet unborn. Act worthy of yourselves. Well, I believe we, the Americans of today, are ready to act worthy of ourselves. Ready to do what must be done to ensure happiness and liberty for ourselves, our children, and our children's children. From time to time, we've been tempted to believe that society has become too complex to be managed by self-rule, that government by an elite group is superior to government for, by, and of the people. We are a nation that has a government, not the other way around. And this makes us special among the nations of the earth. Our government has no power except that granted it by the people. It is made up of men and women who raise our food, patrol our streets, man our mines and factories, teach our children, keep our homes, and heal us when we're sick. Professionals, industrialists, shopkeepers, clerks, cabbies, and truck drivers. They are, in short, we the people. Their patriotism is quiet but deep. Their values sustain our national life. With the idealism and fair play, which are the core of our system and our strength, we can have a strong and prosperous America at peace with itself and the world. So with all the creative energy at our command, let us begin an era of national renewal. Let us renew our determination, our courage, and our strength and let us renew our faith and our hope. It is time for us to realize that we are too great a nation to limit ourselves to small dreams. We will again be the exemplar of freedom and a beacon of hope for those who do not now have freedom. We are a nation under God, and I believe God intended for us to be free. nation. I think this is the greatest nation in all the world. Amen. I really do. Not a perfect nation, but one who has everything in place to continue moving in the right direction. I don't think there's any, anybody in here that would disagree that uh, praying for our nation should be top of the list. Um, praying for our, our national leaders, our state leaders, 
county city. Just praying, <clears throat> uh, praying for our nation. So that's what we're fixing to do. Okay. Now this is it. I want to. I want to ask: Is there someone here who would be willing to lead that prayer? Would you lead that prayer for our nation? You want to use the microphone, don't yes. you? Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> right, no, we're not. We're not too well. Just stand right there. You're good. Now I want to invite um, everyone else. Uh, in just a second, I'll invite you to come up here and let's gather at the altar for this prayer. I think sometimes we need to kneel as we pray for our nation. Okay, and then as as you're leaving, and if you can't get right up here, then when the prayer's over, just kind of make your way. But there's you see three little three little buckets up here. One down there in that corner here and here. And then this bucket is uh, something. This, this, this is such a simple little thing. These are little green army men. Who's ever seen a little green army man? Yeah, there you go, buddy. Why are children enthusiastic today? You got one in your house. There you go. One of the things related to our nation that we need to be faithful to do, I believe, is to pray for our military. To pray for the men and women who are standing for democracy around the world. Sometimes that's misdirected, yes. All in all, though, we stand for what's right, what's good. And more recently, uh, we see that much of what conflict is going on in the world outside our country is festering with our own. And so we, we're called to stand for freedom, but praying for those men and women, for their families that are left here, for their parents who are here, who are always in fear of that one phone call. So just taking one of these and putting it on your desk at work, on your dresser in the room, at, at your house, your bedroom, or some other place, just as a reminder when you see it, to just drop your head. Say, God, I want to pray for the men and women who are standing for freedom around the world. And so feel free to get one. If you have a child, help them get one <laughs> and not a battalion uh, as they make their way back. So I want to invite you to stand up. Those who would come and gather here at the altar, we'll, we'll get in as close as we can. If you want to kneel, you can kneel. Come on, don't be shy. There you go. And uh, Miss Paisley is going to lead us in a prayer for our nation. Do you know the name of our nation? What is it? America. America. That's right. Good. Just want to make sure we're clear on that. Yeah. Come on up. Come on up. And you can uh, join hands with somebody near you or just put your hand on their shoulder. Um, it's a cool thing. You ready for this girl? Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you that we can have a wonderful nation. Thank you for our home and a wonderful family. Amen. 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 How about that? <laughs> Grab me a little prayer reminder. One of those buckets right there and um, make your way back to your seat. And I think our praise team. Thank you. 
Oh 
Thank you for the cross. Uh, you took something that was so horrible and uh, turned it into something that changed the world, that uh, it changed it into something beautiful, something that is life changing for every single uh, believer who ha has ever been and will ever be. And uh, we just praise you. We thank you. Uh, we're not deserving of what you did on that cross, uh, but you did it because you love us. And so. Uh, God, we give our we give our hearts to you, and I pray that uh, if there's someone here this morning or someone listening that, that has not done that, not made you the king of their hearts, as we spoke about earlier, that you would that you would just put that that itch inside of their heart, that you would um, tug at their heart, tug at their at their mind, and uh, just just help help that person and help us believers who are prone to leaving our our Bible on the shelf, I pray that you would just uh, draw us to yourself, that you would uh, help us to realize that the old rugged cross is, that's the pursuit that trumps all, and um, that is uh, the most worthy news of our attention of anything uh, that has ever happened or ever will happen, and uh, it's, it's all uh, your love and, and your doings uh, for, for the sake of us, and a relationship with you and uh, pray we pray for PK as it comes and he just guides us in your word I pray that you would uh, just, just remove any distraction for him that you would uh, clear his thoughts and, and fill them with uh, what you would have him uh, tell your people this morning and it's in Jesus name we pray amen Okay, if you have a Bible, I'm going to invite you to get that, or an iPad, or a phone, or whatever you use for the source of your scripture to get it in words. It will also be up on the screen. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'll be reading from the English Standard Version of Scripture. Now, uh, it is the week of July 4th, and this is not something I do every year, but uh, kind of was on my heart to look at it and, and, um, and look at it. The whole idea of our, our nation, national freedom, and, and who we are as God's people in this nation. And so we're going to do that today. We're going to look at primarily one verse, okay? But we got to dig to get to that one verse. So I want you to turn with me. We're going to start in First Chronicles, I'm sorry, Second Chronicles, chapter 7. Now some of you are thinking already, oh, I know what verse he's going to focus on. But trust me. Trust me, we're fixing to dig a little bit. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 1. And then we're going backwards into chapter 6. And then we're coming back to chapter 7. Just got to hold on. So if you're there, Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 1. Uh, just to set the context real quick, Solomon has completed the temple. 
uh, to the glory of God, uh, the place where uh, God would reside uh, among the nation of Israel, where his presence would be focused there in that temple. And so they're, they, they, they've been celebrating, they've been dedicating, they've been doing all these things. And um, the Bible tells us in, in verse 1 of chapter 7, as soon as Solomon finished his prayer, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. That's an amazing, I love that phrase right there. And what happens when the glory of the Lord fills the temple? Well, verse 2, and the priest could not enter the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord filled the Lord's house. You, you got to understand that in the Old Testament, there was no blood of Christ that stood between man and the holiness of God. Okay? That's why you had the, the, the Levitical priest who came. You had Moses who spoke to God on behalf of the people when they were coming out of Exodus, out of Egypt, the Exodus out of Egypt. And so when the glory of, of God filled the temple, I mean, it, it, even the priest dared not enter into that. So great was his glory. Now, could you imagine? And, and we can come into the presence of God because of the blood of Jesus Christ, but could you imagine that because of the the prayer going on for what would take place in these buildings on a given day, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, whatever. Could you imagine God showing up in such a way that as we were walking across the parking lot to come in, we ran right into the power of his presence in such a way it caused us to stop? As a matter of fact, verse 3, when all the people of Israel saw the fire come down, the glory of the Lord on the temple... They bowed down with their faces to the ground on the pavement and worshiped and gave thanks to the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his steadfast love endures. This is an incredible worship service that's going on right here. It's just incredible. And just the, the presence and the power and the glory of God is overwhelming. Go back out to verse 1 real quick. This is where we have to dig for just a minute. Before we get down to the one verse, I want to break down, and then uh, <clears throat> we're going to sing a beautiful song to close up. As soon as Solomon finished his prayer. So if we're really going to understand chapter 7, what do we need to look at? I either heard somebody speaking in tongues or somebody mumbling and I couldn't understand it. But we really need to look at this prayer. Because all that we're fixing to look at a little bit later in, in chapter 7 comes after he had finished praying. So go with me to Second Chronicles chapter 6. Okay, just turn back a page or two or, 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 or flip back a screen or two. Okay, so it's in chapter 6 where Moses, I mean Solomon is offering a dedication prayer. Okay? And we're not going to read the whole thing, but we're going to read enough of it that you get the, the gist of what Solomon is praying. So we're going to pick it up in, chapter, in uh, verse 21 of chapter 6, if you have your Bible. And we're just going to read straight through. Okay? What I want to ask you to listen for is the wisdom of Solomon and the heart of Solomon and the things that he is asking of God on behalf of God's people over whom God has made him king. So picking up verse 21. And listen to the pleas of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray toward this place. And listen from heaven, your dwelling place, and when you hear, forgive. If a man sins against his neighbor and is made to take an oath and comes and swears his oath before your altar in this house, then hear from heaven and act and, and judge your servants for paying the guilty by bringing his conduct on his own head and vindicating the righteous by rewarding him according to his righteousness. Verse 24, if, if your people Israel are defeated before the enemy because they have sinned against you and they turn again and acknowledge your name and pray and plead with you in this house, then hear from heaven and forgive the sin of your people Israel and bring them again to the land that you gave to them and to their fathers. When the heaven is shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against you, if they pray toward this place and acknowledge your name and turn from their sin, when you afflict them, then hear in heaven and forgive the sin of your servants, your people Israel, when you teach them the good way in which they should walk and grant rain upon your land and 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 in and, and which you have given to your people as an inheritance. If there is a famine in the land, if there is pestilence or blight or mildew or locust or caterpillar, if their enemies besiege them in the land at their gates, whatever plague, whatever sickness there is, whatever prayer, whatever plea is made by any man or by all your people Israel, 
each knowing his own affliction and his own sorrow and stretching out his hands toward this house. Then hear from heaven your dwelling place and forgive and render to each whose heart you know according to all his ways. For you, you only know the hearts of the children of mankind that they may fear you and walk in your ways all the days that they live in the land that you gave to their fathers. Likewise, when a foreigner who is not of your people, Israel, comes from a far country for the sake of your great name and your mighty hand and your outstretched arm, when he comes and prays toward this house, hear from heaven your dwelling place and do according to all for which the foreigner calls to you in order that all the peoples of the earth may know your name and fear you as do your people Israel, and that they may know that this house that I have built is called by your name. If your people go out to battle against their enemies, by whatever way you shall send them, and they pray to you toward this city that you have chosen and the house that I built for your name, then hear from heaven their prayer and their plea and maintain their cause that they sin against you. For there is no one who does not sin. And you are angry with them and give them to an enemy so that they are carried away captive to a land far and near. Yet if they turn their heart in the land to which they have been carried captive and repent and plead with you in the land of their captivity, saying, We have sinned and have acted perversely and wickedly. If they repent with all their mind and with all their heart in the land of their captivity to which they were carried captive and pray toward their land, which you gave to their fathers, the city that you have chosen, the house that I built for your name, then hear from heaven your dwelling place, their prayer and their pleas, and maintain their cause and forgive your people who have sinned against you. Now, oh my God, let your eyes be open and your ears attentive to the prayer of this place. That's a powerful prayer. It really is. And Solomon understands the, the human condition. Solomon has some real insight into what we struggle with and, and the things that we fall into and the things that we, that we follow after that draw us away from God. He also understands the reality of living in a broken world, and, and, and he understands that truly all things are related to the sovereignty of God. And, and so he just goes through and begins to name different things if this then God hear from heaven. If this, if they come, reach out, stretch out their hearts, confess their sins, come with, with a right heart, and you know their heart, you only know their heart, God, would you hear, would you respond to those prayers just over and over, just asking for God's presence, the promise of his presence to be real and, 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 and solid and stable and trustworthy. So go back into chapter 7. Chapter 7 started out. As soon as Solomon finished his prayer. So that's what the context of chapter 7 is. And so we read those first three verses. Then there are some verses of just an incredible uh, celebration. Just um, a, a big gathering and feast and festival days for 23 days. I mean, they just celebrated. But God's response in that familiar verse 14 is directly a response to the prayer in chapter 6. Pick it up now in chapter 7, verse 12. Just going to read three more verses to make some application. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon in the night. After all this, the praying, the celebration, all these things going on, he appeared to him in the night and he said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people, whatever the condition, whatever the tribulation, whatever the strife, whatever it is that is vexing the nation. And then it comes to verse 14. And you've heard this verse, I don't know how many times. If my people, who are called by my name, humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, it sounds so much like what Solomon was praying. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now, let's talk about that, that one verse, just a couple of minutes to make some applications. Stay in that verse. Look at it. I want, I want to point out some stuff. I want you to recognize that this promise is a conditional promise. 
the verse 14 begins with the word what? And then if you look down to the last full sentence, the word then. If, then. We're all familiar with that, aren't we? If, whatever the condition is, then, here's what will flow from it. If you clean your room up, then, whatever. My, my parents never made, made that offer to me, so I don't, I don't have a clue. It was just cleaning up your room. But, you know, you know how that works. You know, if, then. If, then. So, I want you to keep that in mind. That's the nature of this promise. So, what's behind the if? What is it that God's looking for? If, he calls us out. He says, my people. Now, I want you to notice this is important. This is big, I think. You notice he's not speaking to the lost. He's not speaking to the reprobate. He's not speaking to the pagan. He's not speaking to that one who has rejected Christ. This promise and the if part of this promise, which leads to the healing of the land and the forgiveness of sin, it starts and it's addressed to me and you, to those who know God, if my people. There you go. It's for my people. Well, what then? Well, what, what do you want your people to do? If my people who are called by my name humble themselves. Well, that's a big thing right there. Hum Humility is, is one of those things. One, one, one guy, and I, th I think this is absolutely wonderful. He said, you know, humility is so hard to define. And, and just as soon as you think you have it, you don't have it anymore. I mean, it's just that's the way humility is. It's something that grows in you by the presence of God in you as he transforms your heart. It, humility has to do with having this right understanding of our standing before God. If my people are humble, they humble themselves, if they recognize their need of me, if they recognize how desperately situations get when they're walking out from under my shadow, if my people recognize that I am their God, holy, eternal, with, with, without stain, if they recognize their correct standing, if my people who are called by, my, by name humble themselves, okay, and just in the humbling, there should flow out of that some things. And pray, pray, praying, praying together. On Sunday nights, we're doing this thing where we're learning to pray together and pray for our nation. And, and it's, it's not something that comes natural. We're not really good at community prayer unless somebody's up on a stage leading it. Um, but, but allowing our hearts to follow the Holy Spirit and how, how can we pray and how can we witness to God through this prayer time? He says, if my people humble themselves and they pray and then seek my face, that's an action verb. That's the idea of it's not just prayer and getting up. It's prayer with a desire to bring pleasure to God, to seek his purposes, to seek his ways, to seek his heart, to seek after, to pursue, to chase after him and turn from their wicked ways. Isn't that interesting? A lot of times when I hear people praying for our country today, you know what they're praying for and who they're praying for? Who they're praying for? All those bad, bad people out there saying those bad, bad things. And man, God, if you would just straighten them out, our country would be great. God, in speaking to Solomon, and then by way of Solomon to us, when he says you want to get your nation right, this let me tell you where it starts. My people, if my people, called by my name, humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn, repent, turn from their wicked ways, turn. Can you imagine that there are some ungodly things going on even among those who call the name of Christ? There are, if we're honest. I mean, we're, we're pretty sophisticated. We can hide a lot of it, especially the stuff that's just going on in our head. But God has called us to be absolutely exposed to him and his presence, to be willing to, to be examined in detail by his holy presence, his Holy Spirit in us. And anything he shows, reveals, or convicts us of, laying it down and walking away from it, that's what the whole idea of repentance is. And so in this whole prayer for the nation, it's about my people. He doesn't even speak to those who are outside of that, those who have no relationship with God through Jesus Christ. He's speaking to those in relationship 
with God himself, you humble yourself, pray, seek my face, turn from your wicked ways, then, then. So what's God looking for? He's looking for people who are passionately pursuing what it means to walk in holiness with him. Several times in the New Testament, Paul is writing, God's speaking through Paul, and he makes a statement. He says, I pray that you have a walk worthy of your calling. Jesus, quoting the Old Testament, said, I want you to be holy because I am holy. That's our calling, to walk in a way worthy of being sons and daughters of God through the grace of Jesus Christ. So, but, but before we, you know, look around and really start wanting to direct our prayers at this group or that group or this individual or that individual or this political party or that political party, my friends, God kind of turns it around and says, you want your nation to receive healing, it starts with you. It starts with you humbling yourself, praying, seeking my face, turning from your wicked ways. Then, then what will he do? I'll hear from heaven. I'll forgive and I'll heal your land. If then, if then. One of the things that concerns me about our current church culture in America is that a lot of times I feel like churches are at least as concerned, if not more concerned, with being relevant to culture than they are with being pleasurable to Christ. I see across our landscape sometimes, and this concerns me as well, that there are churches who seem to be responding to a lot that's going on in our nation that is actually destroying the fabric of our nation. I see their response is one of cocooning, where it becomes more and more us inside this room. And the problem with church that's just about what we do on Sunday and Wednesday is that it completely ignores the Great Commission to go and make disciples in all the nations. We, we have a dual calling. We have a calling to be the body of Christ in worship and then the calling to be the body of Christ on mission, leading people to Christ. It starts here. It starts at a heart, our attitudes. I, I may be the only one in the room that struggles with this, but there are times when a, a, a really serious spirit of judge and jury springs up in me when I see some of the stuff going on and when I read some of the headlines. And I, I just want to just, you know, and I go to the place of prayer and God says, you know, that's, that's not what I've called you to be. You're neither judge nor jury. You're my hands and feet. I want you to pray for that person. God, I'm not sure I want to pray for that person. Well, that's up to you, but I'm telling you, that's what I want you to do. You know, it's hard to hate somebody when you're praying for them. It really is. It's hard to kneel down before a holy God and say, God, I want to pray for this person, that person, this movement, whatever it is. I want to pray for this, and I want to ask you to bless them. And I want to ask you to show yourself real to them. I want to ask you, Father God, to just absolutely bring them to the place of seeing your incredible glory and to hearing the story of Jesus Christ. And then if you're going to start praying like that, eventually you have to come to the place whereby you say, and God, if you need me to be the hands, the feet, and the mouth to share the gospel of Jesus with that person, I'll do it. Because I too was once lost in sin, but now I've been bound. It's tough. Nothing in here about what the people who don't know God better do. It's about what God's people need to do. If, then. Some takeaways and then we're done. Here we go. Number one. God's love is absolutely unconditional. And you better be glad of that. God's love is based on who he is, not on what you do or don't do. God's love is unconditional. However, God's love is not permissive. There's not a thing you can do to cause God to love you more or a thing you could do to cause God to love you less because his love is conditioned on who he is. It's unconditional toward us. Okay? 
but he's not permissive. I love my, 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 my children, all four of them. Most of the time. I, I love my children. And uh, greatly and deeply. And as best I can as a father unconditionally. But I'll tell you something. If they disobeyed, I got on to them. And it wasn't just a conversation. I know sign language. <laughs> God's love is unconditional, but it's not permissive. So listen to what I'm fixing to say. The gift of salvation, the gift of salvation that comes only through Jesus Christ. There's no other way to be saved. Clay was praying earlier. If you're here today and you have never received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior because you're trying to make yourself better, you're trying to do enough good works to get there, you're trying to give enough money to this nonprofit or that nonprofit or this church or whatever it is. If you're watching online and thinking that watching a service online is something that leads to salvation is, is a credit to you so that one day you're going to get in, I want to tell you, there is nothing to your credit. The only thing, the only thing credited to you by way of salvation is the righteousness of Christ and that only comes when you surrender to his kingship. There's no other way. Jesus said it himself. I'm the way, the truth, and life. No man comes to the Father, but by me there's no other way. Salvation can't be earned. It is conditioned exclusively on the cross and the work of Jesus Christ in dying for the sin of humanity, being buried and being resurrected. Do you agree with that? If you don't, that's okay, but you're wrong. Have an a, a incredibly good friend in ministry. His name is Clyde Evans. I don't know if you all know Clyde. And uh, we were talking one day. <laughs> about the frustrations of people that don't come to church. And he said, well, you know, a preacher told me one time, who told you this before I say it? Do you remember who? Eddie Middleton. Eddie Middleton told him one time, he said, well, listen, brother, if people don't want to come to church, you got to let them. Think about that for a minute. If people don't want to come to church, you got to let them. Church doesn't mean a whole lot to somebody until their heart, and that's the work of the Holy Spirit is turning them in that direction until they see Christ in you and Christ in your selflessness, okay? And so salvation is based on, on the work of God completely, exclusively. But know this, experiencing the fullness of the gifts of God's blessing in your relationship with him through Jesus Christ is conditioned on your humility and your obedience and your devotion to him. Absolutely. The more your heart is set on walking in obedience, the more your heart is set on the word of God, the more your heart is to run from sin and to run toward holiness, the more you experience the fullness of the waterfall of God's blessing. Every time you choose your own path, every time you choose a way of disobedience, I'm going to tell you, that waterfall of blessing is going to get slimmer and slimmer. You're going to wonder, why ain't God at work in my life? And God's over here saying, I, I'm right here. I do want to work in your life, but you chose to go over there. I really need you to humble down and get back over here. I got some stuff I want to pour into your life. Second thing I want to say is this. We, we, we read Solomon's prayer, and we heard his heart in chapter 6, and we see God's response in chapter 7. And, we, and I, I just want you to know this. This is absolutely biblical. God wants to bless you. He does. What parent doesn't want to do good for their child? What, what parent doesn't want to pour into them and, 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 and see them grow and, 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 and excel in whatever they're doing? God wants to bless. He wants to heal. He wants to protect. He wants to restore. That's, that's what he wants to do. It's in his nature to give extravagantly in his blessings to those who love and honor and respect him. And God will bless any nation where his people in that nation are pursuing his glory. We don't even have time to do it right now, but if you're wondering whether that statement is tr true or not, go look at the life of Joseph, right? Day. He was in the foreign land of Egypt. He rose up and was put in charge of Potiphar's house and then his, Potiphar's wife tried to mess things up. Turned out to be a good thing. Because then he ended up in Pharaoh's house and became second in all the land. And was there to, God was at work, blessing. And then he blessed Egypt. 
through his blessing on Joseph. Daniel, Daniel in captivity in a foreign land. And what did God do? He blessed the ministry of that young man because that young man had a heart that was set on God. The healing of a nation, this is number three, take away. The healing of a nation does not begin with the lost getting saved. It begins with the saved passionately pursuing the holiness of God, which just happens to lead to the saving of the lost through the witness and the testimony of the church. See how that works? The Great Commission calling, making disciples in all the nations. It's just, it's, it's just a beautiful promise. Second Chronicles 7, 14. Now, there are some maybe in this room or watching online who are like, yeah, but Pastor, I think that promise is just for Israel. I'm sure, I, I think we're taking it out of context when we, when we well, I disagree. In Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34, the Bible tells us that righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Righteousness exalts a nation. Israel, now listen, Israel was the land and the nation of God in the Old Testament. We're, we're good on that, right? The world is the land and the nation of God of all who call the name of Christ. Every nation in this world belongs to God. He is sovereign over all, not just Israel. And through Christ, this incredible relationship has been opened up to all who receive the gospel of Christ, who will recognize him as the son of God who died on the cross. And so we become, in this nation, God's people right here. We're right here. Listen, I, I, I hesitate to throw this out because, you know, like, well, what? what? Um, I'll, does anybody in here ever watch any of the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies? Do we have any Marvel movie people in here? You know, the Avengers and... Uh, I can't even think of all of them. Y'all are sitting there going, I don't know if I can admit that or not. Is it sinful? Are you facing the cost of the altar? <laughs> well, there's uh, one, of, one of those characters in that, in that whole series of stuff is a guy named Thor, okay? He's kind of a puny guy. He's not very handsome, has a weird accent, and somehow they cast him in the role as Thor. And Thor is from a, a fictional place. This is, this is Hollywood we're talking about. He's from a fictional place called Asgard. Who's ever heard of Asgard? Anybody in here? Oh, now I've got some people who've seen these movies. It's like, okay, preacher's sure seen this. Okay. And so there, if you watch enough of it, you'll know there comes a point in the whole storytelling of that cinematic universe where Asgard is destroyed. It's absolutely destroyed. And, 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 and Thor is just, he is, he's just absolutely broken. Because Asgard is gone. But in a conversation with his father, his father reminds him that Asgard is not a place. It's a people. Asgard can be ever, wherever the people of Asgard are gathered. I remember when I heard that the first time, I thought, man, that, that's it? The people of God, it's not a place is, is, is wherever we're gathered. And so we become the nation of Christ meeting on this street corner. We become the people of God when we gather in a home to do a small group study. We are the people of God when we're at the rec department or at the Walmart or at Huddle House or wherever. We are the nation of God through Jesus Christ on mission right here in Blackwood County and the world around us. I really fully believe Biblically speaking, that if-then promise of Second Chronicles 7, 14, it is still relevant today. So the great call for us, his people, is to humble down, pray, seek him with passion, turn from whatever unrighteousness we're flirting with, thinking about, messing with, practicing, And come to him. And his promise is, then I'll bring healing. My spirit will break out. Gypsy Rose, who was an old school 
long time ago, uh, evangelist. And I'm going to ask our praise team to come on up. We're about ready to do our, our final song. Um, Gypsy Rhodes just, uh, used to say this over and over when, when um, he would be leading a, a, an evangelistic series of meetings. But he, he would always have a, you know, what a, you know what street chalk looks like? A big chunk of, chunk of chalk, not a little thin kind like you write on a chalkboard, or you used to write on a chalkboard. Anyway, he'd always have a big chunk of chalk, and he said, I want, us to, I want us to pray, pray for revival, pray for spiritual renewal, pray for humility, pray that we would come clean, pray that the people of God would pursue holiness, pray that God then would find a uh, an instrument through which he could work to reach this city and to reach this nation and whatever it might be. He said, and how many of you will come and pray with me? He said, and this is how I want you to pray. Then he would kneel down and he would take that piece of chalk and he would start and he would drag it this way and reach with his hand and he would drag it this way. He said, who would come and draw their circle? And our prayer be, God, doeth, do a mighty work and start inside this circle. That's what 714 is all about. God, here we are in the circle because we know that you address that promise to your people, if my people. God, I get so distracted because I just want, there's so many, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm judge and jury here. I'm just, I'm, 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 God, I got to quit that mess. I need you right here. Get me where I need to be so that I might be your instrument in the healing of this land. So we're going to stand up and we're going to sing a song. And um, you, you may feel the need to come to this altar and, and pray. Maybe you're here today and you're like, you know, I have never made a public profession of faith in Christ. What a great day to do that, to find your spiritual freedom in Christ who died for you. Maybe God's put it in your heart to join with the fellowship of this church and you're ready to take that step of faith. I have no idea. Maybe some other thing. But the altar is always open. I'll kind of be standing somewhere. We have some other people in here be glad to pray with you and talk with you as well. well let's stand together as we sing. We're actually singing the, the commission. Is that right? Yeah. Isn't it funny how that works out? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's stand together.
Okay, so before we go, we get to celebrate. <clears throat> I love when we get to celebrate stuff, okay? Um, before I celebrate uh, this young lady who's come today, I want to celebrate how God uh, ministered to y'all last Sunday morning. I don't know who of you were here, but we had a Gideon speaker last Sunday, okay? And the love offering that uh, y'all gave that all goes, obviously, to Gideon's International was over $1,700. How about that? And uh, so thank you for coming. We're going to celebrate that. That's a cool thing. So that's part of, of really, you know, getting out into the world. Really cool thing is Promise, okay? And that would be the name uh, of this person standing to my right. This is Promise Beeson. And um, she comes today um, saying that God has brought her to the place where she knows this is the church she needs to join life with and grow and put down roots and all that good kind of stuff. And uh, she's been baptized as a believer, confessed Christ, but she has never been a member of a church. Wow. And, um, and so we get to share this, this journey with her. And so if you rejoice in that, that God has brought her here, I let me know by saying amen. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> allergies. Yes, allergies. Yeah, allergies. That happens a lot in here. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> uh, she had to remind me, I first met promise in the church office she came in to uh, pay on a trip is that right no, to pay register to re register for pre-k that's that's a trip <laughs> yeah trust me on that and so you already know promise yes okay i'd like for you to meet this is millie she's the the director of our weekday preschool and um so that's her right there okay so that's good would, would you take her back here to the back so that people can say, do you mind with that? Yes. People just want to meet you. And I love people. Yeah, <laughs> we love people too. Thank you, Vicki. Take her on back there. That's exciting. It's exciting to see God, how he's working, different ways he's working. And uh, thank you to our praise team. Uh, hope you had a good month off. Um, <clears throat> but uh, glad to have you back on the stage. Most of yeah. Yeah, all of you on the stage. Yeah, that's good. All right. <laughs> Father God, we love you today. And even as we leave this place, we, we want to leave very much aware of the fact that our, our life every day is an offering to you. Father, teach us what it means to live that way, to live with the thought that in all that we say and all that we do, the way we speak and the way we act and the way we react, that, Father, it's, it's all an offering to you. Teach us, teach us to be very, very sensitive to your Holy Spirit. Give us that faith to trust your leading, to trust those nudges that you bring into our life. Father, I thank you for bringing promise uh, into uh, the family of believers that meet on this street corner. I pray that, uh, that you would help us to nurture her and her faith. And I, Father, I pray you would uh, lead her into that place or area of ministry where she can be involved in all that's going on in your kingdom right here. We love you today. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Happy 4th. Go get them. I love you, <clears throat>